for the second lesson tonight, I would just create an account so we're doing something that like you Yeah, so I've got a handout for you here for the second lesson. Um, so today I'm gonna, so that you under, uh, let, let's go back a step. A uh, content management system is not like a piece of software installed on your laptop. It's running <clears throat> over the internet. And that means there are certain quirks that come with it, because it's not running on your machine. So I, I want to explain the first how, how does communication over the internet work, how, how do web pages work. So in the end, to get your, your, your CMS to the server, you need to send it to the server. So for today, basically, we invite a very simple HTML page, that's the code that makes web page, that what I looked at earlier, and you then send it to the server. And it's also some sort of practice because, you know, when we install the CMS, there are thousands of files you need to send to the server. It's still only, you know, one, one mouse click to send all the files of files in one row. But uh, you, you need to know how to get files from your machine to the web server. So, so today, you'll make a little HTML page and you'll send it to the web server. <coughs> That's why we need the, the accounts on the web server. And but you, you can also you know, take it away, do it at home when you know, like it's here. Time is already done, so I might not be able to go through all the slides today. Um, there are different kinds of, of web page. There are static web page, there are dynamic web page. So today I want to explain what's the difference, what's a dynamic web page, how can we use those dynamic web pages, and a dynamic web page basically is a web page where there's code running, and the, the code where you can basically run in different locations. So I'm going to look at the differences. Well, what's the difference is the code if the code is running on this side versus what's going on if the code is running on that side. So, <coughs> the internet, have a guess how long has the internet been around? Now, in nineties is uh, is the web, but there's a difference between between the World Wide Web and the Internet. And who watched the opening ceremony of the London twenty twelve Olympic Games? You watched it, uh, yeah. And there was someone in the in the what's it called in the you know opening ceremony, yeah, yes. called Sir Tim Berners Lee. So he's basically basically the guy who invented the web. Now the web. Mm, wasn't really that radically new. You know, all the different bits that 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 make the web work were already there before, but he kind of combined it in a specific way. So when, when we talk about the web, that's basically you using a web browser, uh, um, Safari, Firefox, Chrome, Internet Explorer, and you're looking at a web page. And that's been around since the 90s. Yeah? Uh, the internet itself is older. The internet has been around since anyone wants to guess. Doesn't matter. Uh, since the 60s, and the, so the internet basically is the underlying hardware. So uh, anybody here using uh, Netflix or something like that? Yeah. So how do you watch it? On the telly. So you've got some sort of stick in the back of your telly. Yeah. Mm, so yeah. Or the telly is a smart telly and has it built in. Yeah. So uh, that uses the internet, but it doesn't really use the web. I, I assume there's no web page involved. I mean, theoretically there could be. But yeah, so that's an example of you using the internet without using the web. So the internet has been there since the 60s. Who wants to know more about the internet? I'm happy to to give to slow in 10 extra minutes about the internet if you like. No one. No takers? 
All right, so I wanted to talk about packet switching now. That would have been such an exciting topic. Okay, let's leave it then. Okay, so the internet has been around since the 60s. Uh, then the, the web came along, and the language that makes the web tick is called HTML, Hypertext Markup Language. So that's basically a way of describing a web page. So we have so-called um, HTML tags. Can I write on this now? Uh, let's find out. H no, no, I can't. So, can I write now? Let's find out. Yeah. So, HTML tags. Yeah. So, they are basically just um, uh, keywords in those uh, pointy brackets or chevrons or whatever you might want to call them. So, let's say uh, title is, is, a, is one of those keywords. So, you're basically saying you know, uh, pointy brackets, title, pointy brackets, and then whatever follows next is the title of the web page. Yeah. So, um, uh, and then you say, oh, title. Now you're basically saying, um, this is the beginning of uh, everything that follows now is the title and, and then you're saying when you're using the same HTML tag with a forward search you're basically saying this is the end. So this is one of those keywords that exist and you can describe uh, the whole web page like that. So there will be uh, uh, there will be keywords to put an image in, there will be keywords to put a table in and in the end you're basically saying this is the web page, put a picture in this corner use this and that font, like this and that text, this is left aligned, this is right aligned, this is that on a blue background or whatever it might be. You basically describe the whole look of the document using those HTML tags. But the whole, <coughs> the whole thing is static. Yeah. You create a web page and it will always stay the same. You create a web page for your, for your cousin for your cousin's birthday, uh, it's your cousin's 50th birthday, your cousin goes there in four years time, it will still say happy 50th birthday. Yeah, it's, it's like a brochure, it's, it's not going to change. But we can put text and image in. The big new thing of the web were hyperlinks, so the um, uh, anybody played those, um, those uh, choose your own adventure books? Am I the only one? Heard, have you heard of them? I got to show you. So, the big new thing were hyperlinks. Huh? Yeah, oh, yeah. oh, you know them! Yeah. Anyone else? When I was about five. Not not much. From when I was a young kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were very popular in the in the early eighties and so on. So yeah, yeah. Now we're we're in the middle of some of some thing here. Oh, if you wish to do this, you know, go to sixty five. If you wish to open the sarcophagus, go to two four two. You wish to leave by the time you go to one or four. You know. And uh, in the past, encyclopedia, uh, you, you look up something and then it says, oh, it's the same as that one. And you think, I don't know what that one is. You've got to flip through the pages. So the big new idea were hyperlinks. So you click on, on an underlying piece of text, you go somewhere else. And actually, it was supposed to work completely different. Uh, I think uh, the science and also Tim Bernard said this idea that you click on the hyperlink and it opens in a new window. But the machines he was programming on were those uh, next machines. It was um, the machines from a, a guy called uh, Steve Jobs. And those machines um, 
when you clicked on it, you, you couldn't get it to work. That they opened in a new box, so basically the, the existing page got over it. And this is basically how the hyperlink started. But it's it's basically just a very fast version of you flipping the pages. Yeah, you go to Wikipedia these page, these days. You just click from one article to the next. But if you take out your good old-fashioned encyclopedia, you know it will take you. Uh, a very long time to get from one place to the other. So hyperlinks, one of the big new innovations, and not that it was something new at the time, you know, there, there were lots of other systems around that used hyperlinks, and in the end HTML is some sort of descendant of another language called SGML, but he, he wrapped it all up in a nice neat package that was easy to use. And the first web browsers came out, one of them was Mosaic, which turned into Netscape, or which kind of is linked to Netscape, Netscape turned into Firefox. Um, but, but you know, for the first time it was all packaged up neatly, and somehow it became a standard that, that people started to follow. But difficult to update, yeah? You want to change something, yeah? Let's say you, you make that web page for your cousin. Difficult to update. So your cousin is 31 now. You need to remember to set your alarm for the same day next year. You need to go log onto the web server, download the file from the web server, edit the file on your machine, upload the file from your machine to the web server to get it updated so that next year it, it doesn't say how it was in 15. In our example, I think so. So next year it should say happy 51st birthday, something like that. Yeah. So difficult to update. So in the end, in the beginning, websites were a little more than electronic brochures. Yeah. Users had little or no act, uh, ability to interact with the site. And this is how a simple web page looks like. So you know here we got uh, the HTML tag. So we're basically saying this is the beginning of the of an HTML page. And uh, anyone remembers from earlier how does a closing tag look like? Yeah. So let's walk back to the screen. So this is the closing. No. This is the closing tag. Exactly exactly the same thing with a forward slash. So basically. Uh, here we are saying uh, this is the beginning of the page, here we, here we are saying this is the end. And here we are saying this is the beginning of the header, here we are saying this is the end of the header. Here we got the title, here we got the main body of the, of the page, and P stands for paragraph. So we are basically saying this is a paragraph. So this hello world we see, Does it come from here or from there? The second one, yeah. You can, you can spot it because it has an exclamation mark. This one has an exclamation mark. And did the title go anywhere? Yeah, so this one ended up here. And you can see that I made this screenshot really long ago because of the way the browser looks. Um, and if you've got Firefox, Chrome, or anything like that, um, you know, you bookmark the page, then it, this will also be the suggestion for the name of the bookmark. Microsoft, they often want to go their own way. I, I don't know how, how it's now, but in the past they didn't like to use the word bookmark because others used it, so they called it favorite. So if you want to favorite the page, again, this would be the default. Um, uh, suggestion for this page. So, what, what did I do now? I took exactly this code and I put it on this address. So, our, our, our web server is called BIM Server 2 because we used to have one called BIM Server and then we changed the providers. So, the guy Graham, who was in charge at the time called BIM 1 BIM Server 2. So I'll create an area for each of you, 
and it will be well, you can use a name dot server two dot com or if you object to me using your you you can use a name I'm happy to use something else so if you if you use a name you can use a name as a long number at the end no but we can probably get rid of that so if you want something else then you could you can use a name let me know um, and of course it goes without saying don't upload your mp3 collection or other stuff onto the web server that you shouldn't put there and uh, you, you'll be in trouble if you do i should i should i should <coughs> give you some links to some official server agreement you've got to follow you know just that you if you've been warned you know don't put stuff there that shouldn't be there because uh, you'll be in trouble if you do that so i created an area for the module and i've saved exactly this code and sell out html send it to the server so let's have a look and this is what we get yeah. lots of code and not much happening but that's how it usually ends up let's have a look no. Yeah. And here you can see the code. Yeah. Just you know this web browser that I use it, it, it makes the code a bit nice and colorful. That's quite useful, makes it easier to read. Put some indentations in. But they they, they don't they, they only make it easier for us humans to read it. They don't really add anything. You know, you, you could write the whole thing in one line of code and the computer would still understand it and would render the web page correctly. So, oh, did we, can I? Do we have to start from scratch again? Uh, no. Oh no, here we are, good. So, what happens? <coughs> uh, when we look at a web page, yeah, not that much time left, but uh, let, let's show you that. Definitely. Let's go back. So, mm, new. Okay. So, what happens when we want to uh, talk to a server? So, we've got your own. You, you got your own machine. So, uh, that's your. Uh, that's your laptop. Okay, so you want to request a web page and your computer is somehow connected to the internet. And this is a simplified version. In reality, there's more stuff going on. There are computers involved called DNS servers and so on. But I'll, I'll skip all of that. I'll, I'll give you the simplified version. So you want to go to a web page, let's say, stick with the example from earlier, BAE Systems. So your request will basically... Hmm? It's on the Google page. Google company. BAE Systems? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> are you getting a bonus out of this? Yeah. Are you, you headhunters for BAE Systems? Oh, we wish. We do want to see your BAE system yeah, tattoo yeah, in the yeah. end. <laughs> okay, so um, so you basically the, uh, send send a request onto the internet, and and there'll be lots of uh, web servers, yeah. And one of them will be the web server where the BAE systems web pages, and we're basically asking the web server send me this uh, website. Now, if we don't specify which page we want, then most web servers will be configured to send you a page called index. But, uh, you know, we, we might have bookmarked a page, we might already want to go to a specific um, product. Um, give me a, a product name of one of the AE systems products. Product name? Yeah, or number, 
Jetpack 3000, I don't know you tell me. Jetfire SD1000? No, I don't know. I don't know about the movie. Go on, Kay. I know you know. Yeah? Typhoon. Typhoon, okay. Yeah? So if I might just I might just say so you know if my request basically just was give me BAE systems.com, they'll probably just send me a page called index. That's the usual configuration. But I might have actually asked for BAE systems uh, dot com slash uh, planes slash typhoon and then they'll send me whatever the HTML page is in the folder uh, typhoon with the name uh, sorry in the folder planes with the name typhoon again of course I'm simplifying a lot um, and because we, we, we have a dynamic web page I'll talk about that later but in the end for now let's just imagine you know this is the server and we've got a folder and we've got a subfolder and in that subfolder we got many files and there's another subfolder so basically you, you're just telling the system what file you want so maybe I want um, folder planes and then I want typhoon and it will grab that that file and send it back to me or if I don't say what I want it will just take uh, the file at the top level and send me the the, the, the landing page. Yeah, so again, a very simplified, uh, but we can get more complicated later. Yeah. So our PC sends a GET request to the server, the server sends a response, and if all goes well, it will be the page we want. Yeah, that would be a 200. Anyone ever seen a 404 on a web page? Yeah, it's usually you, you want to ask for a web page that didn't exist. That's uh, 404. And if, if you're very keen, you can look up all the response codes at this address. But I don't think uh, that's a very exciting reading. So, we talked about static web page. Yeah, we just find some HTML code and we put it on the server and people can access it. So, what are dynamic web pages? Officially, this class is until 7. Um, we'll finish at 7 and then we quickly go. Oh no, we, are we in the same building? Yeah, yeah good. So, we, I can go a bit longer. Because, you know, what they, name it, what they do is they lock the entrance to the other buildings after 10 15 minutes. So, last year I had to go from here to Brook Building. And if I ever overrun the lecture, I couldn't get into Brook Building. Because it's dark, they would, they would lock the gates. But because we're in the same building, I can keep going a bit. Okay. So the dynamic web pages, they will change the response, they will be customized. Because in the end, within that HTML code, we can mix programming code in. So simple example. Uh, you make that, uh, that uh, web page for your cousin that I mentioned earlier. Don't save. Oh, I should, maybe I should have saved. Maybe I want to go back to the picture later. Anyway, too late. It's gone. So, um, so let's say your your page says "Happy Birthday." What's your cousin called? Dear? Huh? What's he? What's he or she called? Dave. Dear Dave. Uh, uh, can I erase with the other end? Ah, I thought I can erase with the other end. Technology, yeah. So, is there an eraser? Yay! Mm, that's not very good. Uh, you notice I've never used those before. But we're getting there. So, Dave, um, happy uh, 50th. Yeah. Um, happy that's a happy 50th here we are okay yeah so it will always stay the same so dynamic web page we basically replace the 50th with, with some code so you know we say current year 
I mean, I'm simplifying again. Current year minus what year is Dave born? 1967. Yeah. Current year minus 1967. Yeah. So, you know, this year we go there, the computer will do the calculation. 2017 minus 19, oops, 1967. So he's 50. Yeah. It's supposed to be a zero. Oops. So next year we go to the same web page. It will do 2018 minus 67. It will say happy 50 birth, 51st birthday. So again, I oversimplify everything because this only works if Dave has birthday on 1st of January. Otherwise, you know, it, it wouldn't work because we, we just take the current year. So if, if Dave is born 1st of July, there will be six months where this kind of calculation would be done. Yeah. But of course, we can fine tune the whole thing. You know, instead of just doing current year minus 1967, we could also take months and days and so on into account. So that's basically all our dynamic web pages. It is, come on. Yeah. It's a normal static web page with HTML, but we mix some code in. So it can change, it can respond. So we could ask it, I don't know, what what are 50 euros in pounds? Uh, there will be web pages where you can go and you can ask them what's 50 euros in pounds. So there will be some code running in the background. They'll probably look up the current uh, exchange rate and they'll do it for you. I'm sure you all believe me, those web pages exist. I don't need to show you. I can look up what's the temperature in Blackpool. Yeah. So yeah, they'll look it up in a database and they'll tell you what's the temperature in Blackpool. So it's normal HTML, but with some code mixed in. Examples of dynamic web pages. Basically, these days, everything is a dynamic web page. Any of those you want me to click? Yeah. No, Amazon. No. Dynamic web page. It won't really work, because if you go to Amazon, it will tell you, let's say you want to buy the latest typhoon. And then it will say five in stock or something like that, and you know, some Saudi child bought one, then it will say four in stock or however many are left. So it will constantly talk to a database in the background. And maybe exchange rate has shifted a bit, so the price has to go up or down a bit, something like that. Yeah. So it can't be done basically without a dynamic web page. Same for message board. And you log on, you leave a message. Someone else logs on, he reads your message. Um, search engine, news web page, games, betting, social media, banking, you know, they're all dynamic web pages. I don't think you'll find many web pages these days that are not dynamic. So um, if we look at the example from earlier, yeah, we, we had our own machine. Yeah, this that was our laptop and yeah, I said there are many servers on the internet and one of them is the one we want to talk to so the main machines involved with us visiting a web page is our laptop and the server we want to visit so there are two main machines involved that means and, and machines can run code that means there are two machines where the code could be running and there's a huge difference between the code running on the server and the code running on the client. And I guess which one is better? Server? Good answer. Um, you know, I think the correct answer is better depends on what you want to do with it. But why do you think server is better? You both said it, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Why is it better? Powerful. More powerful, yeah. Think of something like Amazon. Could you run the code on your client? I think it'd be too large for code as well, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. To run it on the small machines, I know the big memories, but small mm. machines. But well, you know, Amazon millions of products. You can't run it on this machine because how how can this machine know what 
each of those millions of kilobytes cost. Yeah. You'd have to send the whole database to this machine. Yeah. So it, it has to run on the server. Plus you've got to pay someone needs to get the credit card number. You, know, you can't give all the customer details, all the customer passwords, all the product details to the, to the visiting machine. So usually, for business purposes, it's best if the code is running on the server. It can talk to a database in the background. You can handle payments, things like that. But it has the advantage that every time you want to do something, the code has to run to the server. The server has to prepare a response. The response has to be sent back to you. That costs some time. So if you want to play some online games, you know, some action -y games, you know, not like, you know, press, press one if you want to go into the cave and press two if you want to beat the tiger, you know, that, that would work well um, on the server side. But any kind of action, you know, anybody here who hasn't played something like Super Mario or who doesn't know how it works, you know, little man jumping around to you press buttons, yeah. So something like that, you wouldn't really realistically be able to probe them on the server. Yeah, because every time we want to do something, we have to send a request. The server has to deal with it. We have to send it back. Um, so code running on my own machine can be very responsive. But code running on the server can be connected to databases. Um, so each of them has their own advantages. And uh, the, the best way is if we combine both worlds. Yeah, then we've got something like uh, Ajax. We can combine both. And I'll show you an example of a web page where we can combine both. Um, so. Oh, let's not use Chrome because I'm I'm locked into that. Um, let's use. Okay. What should we search for? You plan. Okay. So I press you. And actually, I only pressed you, and there are already some suggestions coming in. Because actually, what happened is when I visited Google, Google sent code to my machine, and that code is now running on my, my machine. And that code basically says every time I press a key, the moment I let go of the key, Whatever key I pressed is already being sent to Google, even though I haven't pressed enter yet. So they are already running code on my machine. The moment you let go of the key, your key slope is being transmitted. And Google now checks people who look for you, what are they looking for. And I assume they take my location into account, yeah, because we are in a university. So Unidays, that's some sort of student discount scheme. UCAS, yeah. Uber, I don't know, maybe. maybe. Maybe there's something nationwide and something on a more local scheme, not sure. Yeah, if we were in, in, in I don't know, in Italy, uh, Unidays probably wouldn't show up more. So, uh, but, but it looked, uh, what's the most likely thing we want now if we start searching for you? And we, see, we said we search for UCLAN, so I put a C in now. So, UCAS, UCL, UCL email, what's UCAS? What's that? It's a lot of... No, no, but what's, what's UCAS? What's the click on it? Oh, this is a stupid guy. It's a guy? It's a, it's a singer. It's a comedian, yeah. Ah, okay. So, UCL, so... Yeah, so now now, now, now we got you, you get UCLAN as a suggestion. Yeah. So we are basically combining code on the server and code on the client 
and that gives us some advantage. Let's look at an even better example. Who remembers using the internet for navigation before Google Maps came along? I forgot the name now. What, what was it called? <laughs> yeah, and then and there was a very popular one. I can't remember the name now. I think it's speed. Anyway, it was what it was. You saw basically a map. Uh, you wanted to go further north. You click the go north button. The screen goes white, and you wait for the next pictures for the same map up a little bit further north, being sent down the line to you. Ah, my brain. I can't remember the name. But you know, something like that maybe. Can't remember. Because you know, it hasn't been around for 15 years. So I think last. Probably gone for 15 years or so by now. Yeah, but that's how it used to be. A code running only on the server. You click north, the screen goes uh, screen goes blank. You wait for the for the tiles for the map north to come. Whereas here, we've got code running on the server because it's extremely responsive. Let me plug my mouse in. Yeah. Because basically Google put some code on my machine and put a bit of the map on my machine and now we basically feed the code on my machine with the map from the Google database. Now I can grab the map, look and I can move it up and down. Now this is only possible because actually I, I control the data locally like a locally installed app. If the, if the data was completely held on the server, I, I couldn't do things like that. I would have to press the arrow north and I'd have to wait for the results to come in. Basically, my, my machine will now be served with, with the map. And uh, if the internet connect, connection is reasonably fast, then Google will probably refill that cache faster than I can scroll. Um, yeah. Oh, didn't we talk about BAE? Now recently the Ucline Wi-Fi got much slower. I think it's because they they swapped all those wired desktop machines with those wireless machines. So recently the Ucline Wi-Fi is quite a bit slower. But in the past, yeah, it's, it's quite fast. You know, I, I couldn't have I, in the past I couldn't have outscrolled um, Google Maps. Just recently our Wi-Fi is a bit slow, so I can now scroll faster than. Basically, the do Google database can be filled with a bit of a map I'm holding. Or maybe, maybe the machine just isn't powerful enough, I don't know. Yeah, but uh, yeah, we, we can have a code on the server. And PHP is quite popular. That's, that's the one Shula is using, the software we use will use uh, PHP. We can run code on the client. I'll show some examples uh, next week. Or we can have a combination of both. We can have code running on the client and on the server, and they talk to each other over the internet. OK, so here's the handout for today's practical. So you're basically just creating a very simple HTML page. <coughs> You've seen uh, the, the P pack before. P stands for paragraph. And we use another one called H1. H1 means H stands for heading. So H1 is a heading of the highest order. So it's a very simple HTML page. And the, the task is you, you write it in a text editor and you then send it to your area on the web server, which doesn't exist yet, which basically is something I've got to create. Yeah. 